Hello, so today we are going to take a look at this problem called kth missing positive in number and the problem just gives us an array and the number k and the array has only strictly increasing numbers so it's increasing and it doesn't have um, equal numbers and what we want to find is the kth missing positive integer what this means is that let's say we get, we get 1, 2, 3, 5 and we want to find the first missing integer so at this point, well, 1 two, three, and then four is missing. So the first one is four. Um, another example here, two, three, six, twelve. We want to find the fifth missing integer, a missing number here. So the first missing one is one because that's a positive number that isn't here. So we can have before the first number, we can have missing numbers. And then we have in this range, four and five. And then we have in this range, um, so basically, maybe let's write this down. So we have 1, and then we have in that range 4 and 5, and then we have after 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we have anything that is after 12. So which is the fifth one? So we have this is the first, the second, the third, the fourth. The fifth one is 8, so the result should be 8. Um, right? Okay. And so let's go again. So if we have 3... Uh, something like this and we want the first one the first one would be one because that's missing here if we have a say four five and we want to look for the second missing number the second would be three because the first one would be one right so that's the idea of the problem so let's see how we can solve it um, okay so the first solution should be pretty simple right uh, we could just take a set and put the array values um, the values in the array here in the set and then just start from 1 and start counting. Is 1 in the set? That means it's not missing. We shouldn't count it toward the kth number, missing number here. Is 2 missing? If not, don't count it. If it is missing, then if we are looking for the kth number, we should return for the first num missing number, we should return it. Otherwise, we should decrement k and keep looking, right? So, very simple solution. So, the simplest solution here would be just taking a set and then saying set of array. And now that we have the set, we can start counting, right? So let's start counting from 1. Because the, those are the positive integers, the non-zero positive integers start from 1. And so we can just start counting from that. And so to do this, what we want is, um, we want to, so we have the set of the elements in the array. So we want to just keep going until k is no longer, is equal to 0, right? So while k is bigger than 0, which means we are still looking for the missing number, and so what we do is we check if current is not in the set, that means it's a missing number, right? So we found a missing number. At that point, what we can do is just um, decrement k, right? Because either because if we are looking for the fourth one, we just found the one of the missing numbers, we have three to look for. If it's the first we are looking for, we can just return right away, right? And then here we want to increment because once we check check it for one, either it is in the miss it's missing or not, we should move on to the next one, right? Um, and then if k reaches zero, we will exit the while loop, right? So when we exit the while loop here, that means k is equal to zero here, which means we found the missing number. So we should just say return. So it's current enough now. Um, so now the question is, is current here enough? Um, and the, the answer is we need just minus one because um, when we, when k reaches zero, right, um, we incremented, we decrement it and then we increment by one. So there is a necessary increment by one. So we need to just cancel that. But otherwise, this should be it. Um, because let's say we, we reach it, let's say five, and then we have seven next. And then six is the missing number. But we incremented this by one. So we have seven. So we need to decrement by one. And that should be it. So let's test this. Um, okay, so I have some examples here um, that we can tr try out um, with the solution here. And so let's see. So for this here, the solution is 4. 
for one two um, we need the second uh, pa missing positive number so the first one is three and the second missing one is four for this one we were want the third missing number so it's five this one we, need, we want the second missing number right and so to the first missing number so that's two here we want the first missing number this is an empty so it's one and here we want the that's the example we looked at when we looked at this example here uh, which was eight and so that's what this returns here and so that's pretty much it for this solution uh, we will look at other solutions next um, okay so the next solution we are going to take a look at is uses binary search um, and so let's, let me explain why can binary search be applied here. So if you take the example that we had, example two, where we had um, an array like this with two, three, six, uh, twelve, and we, k was equal to five, and this was the array. Um, and so one thing to realize here is that for let's say i numbers. Um, so for x numbers in A, well, let's rephrase this differently. For the x first numbers in A, so for the x first numbers in A, what we can say here is that um, the number of missing numbers or positive integers in it is just a of x minus 1 minus x. Uh, why is that? Uh, well, because if I, let's take an example here. Let's take in this array here, let's take maybe x equal to 2 or maybe 3. So this is for the first three numbers. So if I take the array we have here, which is um, 2, 3, um, 6, and 12. Let's put the numbers on top. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? So the first um, three numbers, that's this. To find the, the number of missing positive numbers in there, we just need to take ax minus 1 minus x, which is equal to um, a of x is 3, so a of 2, minus 3, which is 6, minus 3, so we have 3 missing numbers, because if you look here, we have, the numbers that we have missing there are 1, 4, 5, and that's 3 numbers. But why is this correct? Because what we are looking for is the numbers missing from this, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we keep going that are missing from the array and so if we just put these side by side and put the array here so we'd have maybe in a different colors so we'd have here two three six right and then we have the rest of the array so what's important for the first three numbers is actually comparing these two right like what we expect is to have 3 at this point, if, if the array didn't miss any numbers. So if we take the number at this position, which is 6 minus 3, then we'll get the missing numbers, because if there weren't... Because basically it's supposed to be at 3, but it's at 6. So it, it must be that we skip it 3 to, get, to have here 6, right? And so what this number is, is just i minus 1. For the x first number, what this number is, is just x minus 1, and what this number is, is x. So we just have to get x minus 1 minus x to get the number of missing numbers in the first x numbers of a. Right? Now, how can, we, how can this translate to our solution? So what we are looking for here is the kth missing number. So what we are looking for is an x such, such that ax minus 1 minus x is at least k, right? 
is, is k even, right? Because the number of missing numbers we are looking for is k, right? To get to the k missing number, we are looking for this to be equal to k, right? And so the, what we are looking for here is for a x minus 1 minus x to be equal to k. So we are looking for the x that will get us to k. So in terms of binary search, what this would mean is we are looking for a function that for binary search to be able to solve binary search. I have a video on my channel explaining binary search um, on that, that, that helps you solve a problem that is not just like a sorted array where you are looking for a number, but you are actually having a function and uh, you are looking for a specific um, predicate to be true. So the usual pattern there is to have f false, the function keeps being false for different values of the array, and then once it becomes true, it keeps being true. Um, sometimes it can also be the inverse, which is true, 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 and then you get to false, right? So in our case here, our function here, so this is the function, so in binary search, to be able to solve a problem, you need to define both the range that you will be looking at, and then you need to define the function x, um, and like its predicate, are you looking for this, the first true value, are, are you looking for the last false value, um, so that's what you need to determine here. Uh, and so maybe I should mention here that, name that what we are looking for. So these are the three things we need to define for our binary search function. So the range, that's easy. We know that the range we are looking for is just from 0 to the length of the array. Now the function is what we defined here, which is that a of x minus 1 minus x is... We are looking for the first true, but the function in general needs to be something that once it becomes true, it keeps being true. So to do that, we just do bigger or equal to k because once we reach that the difference is k, the array is increasing. So a x minus 1 is increasing and the x values are increasing, right? Because we are going to, through the array, right? So that's also increasing. So that means that this in general is increasing. So once we reach k, we will only have more missing numbers or no missing numbers. So it has to be um, it ha this is true, right? This will keep being true. Now, what are we looking for here? We are looking for the first true value, right? Because that would mean we are getting to equal to k. So what we are looking for is this here. And so now what's left is just writing our binary search using the information that we have here. And so let's, let's try it. So we would have def k, k positive number. And we would have an array and then k. So we need to start writing our binary search. So the low value starts out from 0 and the high value starts out from the length of the array. So the same range that we defined here. And then the, the general template of binary search, which is while low is smaller than high, we pick the mid value, which is here high minus. Uh, sorry, it's low. We have different ways of writing the mid here. We could either do um, low plus to avoid overflow um, divided by 2. Or we could just do high, low plus high and do the divisions like, like that. So I'm going to just use that one. And then uh, from there, well, we could just do our function here, which is if a of mid, so we replace x with mid, minus 1, a minus x is bigger or equal to k, what should happen here? So if we find that it's bigger or equal to k, we have two possibilities, uh, possibilities here. Either we are at this point or we are at this point because the value is true. So when we are here, we go left. Or if we are here, we stay at the same place, at the same mid value, right? So which, what, what this means is that if this is true, we have to go left, right? We have to go left or stay at mid, right? So here that means go left or stay at mid. So what this would mean basically here, going left or staying at mid, it means that the high that was here, we need to put it instead here. So that would mean that high is equal to mid, right? Um... 
Now the else case. The else case is, uh, so I, I think I made a mistake here. This is bigger. I'm looking for the first value that is almost k. And so here that that's equal to mid and here I could do else is low. So if we have a false value, we need to go right, right? Because it's false value. If we keep going left, we keep, we'll keep getting false values and we are looking for the first true. So to do that, we are going to do a low equal to mid plus one. And at the end, we could just return low. This is the general template. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now we just need to run this and make sure it works. And in terms of time complexity, this is binary search. So this, this is of log n. Um, and yep, so the login time here. And in terms of space, we are not using extra space, so this is all one space. And so the main idea to retain from this problem here is that um, you, the way you can um, write a binary search that is not like the traditional one, which is just an array and looking for an element, is you need to find a function that kind of has this structure or a similar one. Uh, where you have true, 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 and then false, false, false. And then you need to define your function, the range, and what value you are looking for. And then you could just apply the binary search template here that you need to know. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So let's type this up and make sure it passes test cases. Um, okay, so I wrote down here the solution that we just went through in the overview. Um, so just binary search structure. We have our function here. We go right, if we should go right, and then we go left otherwise. Um, and then we can just run this on the test cases we have here and make sure it, the results are correct. And we have 4, 4, 5, 2, 1, and 8. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this problem. Just applying binary search here. Um, and we, we could do another brute force solution that is not using a set or binary search and just sort of open. Um, where you could just iterate through the array and doing a brute force to find the missing k number. Um, it's not an interesting solution, so I'll leave that to you. But um, yeah, these are the three main solutions to this problem. Uh, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.